Hey everybody, uh, chapter two, lesson D, solving polynomial inequalities. Up to this point, we've actually done a little bit of this in chapter one, so this should be a review lesson, but I wanted to cover this again as we're going to get into the um, properties and inner workings of rational functions and solving their equations and inequalities. And I wanted to just review the process of doing some interval notation as well as maybe some inequality notation here. So our objective is going to be simple today, just solve polynomial inequalities algebraically using all of our um, skills that we've built thus far. So let's get into it. Recall that when solving a polynomial inequality, what we want to do is solve the equation to find the critical values and test 1x value from each of the intervals. Okay. If the output satisfies the original inequality, then the interval that the output comes from is part of the solution set. So what I want to do in each of these examples is determine the interval where f of x is less than 0 with the given solution. So let's start simple. Um, first thing that I need to do is find the critical values. So right now I know one of the critical values because I'm given that. Okay, the critical values that I'm given where f of x will equal 0 is at 1. Okay, so x equals 1. So I've got to use either some long division or synthetic division in order to find the other critical values. So in this case, I'm going to do some long division. If x equals 1 is a 0, then x minus 1 would be a factor. And it would be a factor of the polynomial itself, x cubed minus x squared minus 16x six plus 16. You could use synthetic division here as well if you'd like to. I'm choosing to use polynomial long division. And it's my preference at this point. So x times x squared gives me x cubed. I multiply through. Looks like I'm going to have pretty nice cancellation here. Um, okay, so let's see. x times negative 1 is negative x squared. Good. So I'm going to get 0. I'm going to drop down a 16x. Excuse me, negative 16 x and because I have two terms in my divisor, this being my divisor, I'm going to also drop down the 16. So I'm going to multiply by negative 16. I'm going to place that here. I'm not going to put any x value here. I could use that as a placeholder if I'd like. Multiply through and it looks like I'm going to get a remainder of 0, which is exactly what I want. Therefore, this polynomial f of x can be written as x minus 1, and then x plus 4, and x minus 4. Okay, all I did to get x plus 4, x minus 4 is factored that result. Right? That's called the quotient. Okay, so <clears throat> I could kind of check these, test these values uh, in these test intervals just by graphing, actually. So I don't necessarily need to test values like I did in chapter one, I can graph and I can see the intervals where they lie. So I've got a x-intercept or a critical value at x equals one, negative four, and four. So I'm gonna just sketch this real quick. Negative four, zero. Uh, it looks like one, zero, and four, zero. So this is a cubic polynomial, as we saw from its leading term. It's got a positive leading coefficient, so its uh, end behavior should look like this. None of these factors are repeated. There's no repeated roots, so the polynomial should look kind of like that. That's not perfect, but it works. Originally, I wanted to know where f of x was less than 0, so I'm going to highlight where f of x is less than 0, but not equal. All right, so I'm going to have open intervals here. f of x is less than 0 on all of those y values, right? All of those outputs are less than zero. Therefore, f of x, oops, f of x is less than zero on the interval from negative infinity up to, but not including negative four, unioned with the interval from one to four. That would be the interval on which that polynomial would be less than zero. Okay, let's look at number two. I'm given that uh, f of negative 3 is 0, therefore my critical values, one of them, one of the three critical values, will be negative 3. I'm going to go ahead and uh, this time I'll use synthetic division. I'm going to put a negative 3 up here in the box, put my coefficients, 
and knowing that this should be a factor or a root or a zero, uh, I should get a zero as a remainder. So let's do the synthetic division process. Drop the two, multiply negative three and two, add, multiply, then I add, then I multiply again, and it looks like it zeroes out. So f of x in this case will equal x plus three. That's coming directly from our original zero that was given. Now let's factor the quotient. So, or let's see if we can factor the quotient because we've got to find the other potential critical values that would come from that. So f of x would be equal to, in linear factors, x plus 3. Then I would have a 2x and x. Let's go with um, minus 2 and a plus 1. I think that that would factor accurately. Yes, it would. So now I'm going to yield my three critical values, of which I already know one. x equals negative 3, x equals negative 1 half, and x equals 2. Again, I could use test values, right? If I, if I knew that this was true, that I had a critical value at uh, negative 3, 0, and at negative 1 half, 0, and at 2, 0, I could test four values, and I could pick them out, and I could go uh, somewhere to the left of negative 3, between negative 3 and negative 1 half, between negative 1 half and 2, and out here. But instead, I'm going to graph this polynomial knowing what will happen. Right? Each of these linear factors has an odd uh, degree. Therefore, it will pass through at that specific zero value or critical value. And so I'm going to sketch. And it looks like if I want to know where it's less than zero, uh, our interval f of x will be less than zero on the interval from negative infinity to negative three, um, and then unioned with negative one half over to two. Okay. Now, if I would have made that less than or equal, then I would have closed off the brackets on both uh, negative three and negative one half, as well as two. Okay, so it's kind of some review, but also some shortcuts now with how we know to sketch curves. Okay, so let's move on to one more slide, and then we'll call it good for today. Okay, here we are with an example. This is our last slide for today. It's got three separate inequalities, and what I'd like you to do is pause the video and see what you can do. Okay, go through these problems. Use all methods necessary. Quadratic formula, factoring, factor by grouping, possibly completing the square, although in none of these cases will you need to complete the square. Maybe some curve sketching and identify the intervals at which each of these uh, equations, excuse me, inequalities is true. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with the first one. I'm going to use curve sketching here. Okay, curve sketching allows me to know that my critical values are at x equals 0 and x equals 3. x equals 0, x equals 3. So I've got the point 0, 0. I've got that point 3, 0. Okay, so now if I were to expand this polynomial, I would have x to the 5th minus 3x to the 4th. And I want to know where that's less than or equal to 0. So this is a 5th degree polynomial. And what I'll notice here is that I've got an even multiplicity, right? That root at x equals 0 is even. Therefore, it's going to touch and not pass through. So end behavior on a fifth degree polynomial with a positive leading coefficient will look like this. Thus, my polynomial will look somewhat like that. I want to know where this is less than or equal to 0. So I'm going to trace all values where this is less than or equal to 0. And I see that f of x, I shouldn't say f of x, I should say that this, that x to the fourth times x minus 3 is less than or equal to 0 when x is in the set or on, I'll write on, on the interval from negative infinity all the way up to and including 3. Okay. 
Uh, how about the second one? Let's take a look at that. Um, I'm going to make one side equal zero. Oops, minus nine. Greater than zero. So in this specific example, and I will always do this if you can't use other methods to kind of start yourself off. So you don't have to guess and check what, you know, it, like is negative one a solution to this? And actually a negative one is a solution to this inequality, or excuse me, to the equation, right? So it would be a solution to the equation. Um, I would give you that, right? Unless there were some other um, means by which you could do it, like factor by grouping or something like that. So I'm telling you that x equals negative one would be a solution to the equation. Now you're gonna use that, right? So I'm gonna use that 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus 6x minus 9 equals 0 has a solution of x equals negative 1. All that that means is x plus 1 is a factor of that polynomial. So I'm gonna do some synthetic division to find the other critical values. So I've got one critical value now, and that is x equals negative 1. Let's find the others. So I'm going to use negative 1, we'll use some synthetic division, 2, 5, negative 6, negative 9. Okay, I know this should be a root, so that should be a 0. Drop the 2, negative 2, that makes this a 3. Multiply by uh, 3 by negative 1, I get a negative 3, and then I get negative 9. So when I multiply, I get 9, and that comes out to be 0, is exactly, exactly what I want it to be. Therefore, 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus 6x minus 9 is equal to x plus 1 times 2x squared plus 3x minus 9. Okay, if I wanted to know where this equals 0, I already know one of the solutions is a critical value at x equals negative 1. I'm going to factor the second. Okay, I had factored the first. That was already there for me. I'm going to factor the second and figure out what two critical values are yielded here. So this one's pretty plain to see that we would want a plus three here and a minus three here. Okay, so these would yield uh, critical values of three halves and negative three. Okay, so now again, I can plot this polynomial using curve sketching skills that I've accumulated negative three zero, negative one zero, and three halves zero. Sketch the polynomial, it's a cubic. Where is it? Uh, in this case, greater than zero. All right, so I'll follow any one of the above inequalities, but I want greater than zero, so that's gonna be not at these ends, because that would be greater than or equal to, but I want this as an interval then. So the interval in which number two is satisfied, that inequality would be from negative three to negative one, unioned with three halves to infinity. Awesome, let's look at the last one. The last one's gonna use some of our curve sketching skills and the understanding of multiplicity and is it an even or an odd multiplicity. So here's our critical values x equals 0, x equals negative 4, x equals negative 3 halves, and x equals 2. So let's plot these. So that's negative 4, 0. And then I've got a negative 3 halves, 0. Oops, comma, 0. I've got a 0, 0. And I've got a two zero. Okay, let's sketch the curve. Now think about the degree of this polynomial as well as what's happening at each of the roots, right? The roots being each of the x values that are critical values. So what's happening here is I've got a, let's see, one and a two and a three and a one. Right, a one, two, a three, and a one. So that's a seventh degree polynomial plus a bunch of stuff that I really don't care about at the very end. I want to know whether it's greater than or equal to zero. 
Well, I know since this is a positive odd leading term, the end behavior should look like this. Okay, down to the left, up to the right, like all other positive odd polynomials. Okay, so are there any roots where the graph will touch and bounce off? Yes, at uh, negative four, okay, because of this even root. Everywhere else it'll pass through. So I should have a polynomial that looks kind of like that. I want to know where it's greater than zero. Okay, greater than zero. And actually, for the fun of it, I'm going to change it to greater than or equal to. It'll throw uh, a little wrench in the deal here. Okay, so equal, I do first. Greater, I do second. Okay, so that polynomial will be greater than or equal to zero on the following interval. Negative four, unioned with negative three halves to zero, unioned with... 2 to infinity. Okay, this would be my solution set. Now, if I hadn't done the equal to, I get to drop a bunch of stuff. I would drop this negative 4, and I'd just go from negative 3 halves to 0, and from 2 to infinity. So if I were to drop that, that's what my solution set would be. Notice the difference. Pay attention to those details, because that could be the difference between... Um, you know, an A and a B, whatever, or maybe even more. So, hope it went well, guys. That should be a review for the most part, uh, solving polynomial inequalities. Awesome. Have a great day.